set me free and I will follow you against the Blight. Name's Bodon Fedic, merchant and entrepreneur. This here is my son, Sam. Part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Dark Spirit. That's what your dream was. You're a hard woman to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy, Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins, Levy the trader. Oh yes, for years. Considered him a friend, I did. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Make us breath, I'm a bit nervous. Honoured to be here, really. After King Marek freed us from the Orlesians, the Grey Wardens begged the King's permission to come into Ferelden, some sort of internal business. Me and a mess of other Warden sympathisers spoke on behalf of your order. Tan Logain was very much against letting Orlesian Wardens in the Kingdom. But Marek, Andraste, bless him, was a fair-minded monarch and he let them in. So that's why I was there when the Wardens and their leader, Genevieve, presented herself to the King. The first Wardens in Ferelden in over a century. Proudest state of my life, that was. Duncan was a bit of a scamp back then. We were of an age and struck up a friendship. The King himself went with the Wardens on their mysterious business. When he returned, he rescinded King Ardlan's decree, and the Wardens came back to Ferelden for good. People say it's because the Wardens have become terribly unpopular. Just soaking up tires and not doing a bleeding thing for the Kingdom. I say that's bollocks, as recent events have shown. Oh, my stomach's all a flutter. You're welcome. My family, well, past a bit checkered to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last Warden Commander of Ferelden back when the Wardens were known as Freeloaders. So King Arlen banished the Wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. Hard to say. After King Arlen died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. Our family's only crime was guarding the kingdom against the Blight. We're not ashamed of that. I ask for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honour. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honour. Soldiers peak a strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. He also hoped to recover lost warden history and perhaps a few old relics. No one knows what's up there now. Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. 
Duncan said he would help her after the Battle of Ostagar. Said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldier's Peak, but the place... Well, they say it's haunted, and it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it, at least? A thousand blessings upon you, Warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Why are we stopping? There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. I am. The Antam are the eyes, hands, and mouth of the Kunari. We are how my people know the world. Compared to what? What does anyone truly know of the world? The world changes. We change. The Antam observe what we can, just as you do. There is no point to this. We are keeping the Darkspawn waiting. As you wish. Yes. I am hardly surprised. To answer a question. The Arishok asked what is the blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. The one who commands the Antam, the body of the Kunari. Kunari have no kings. Why do you? Exactly. You don't ask, nor do I. The Arashok sends me and I go. Yes. I cannot go home. Thank you. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. As you wish. Yes. Sitting, as you observed. Your grasp of the obvious is remarkable. I did. Parshera. Was there anything else? As you wish. You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is... unexpected. You sound surprised. You must have heard this before. You'll get over it. Eventually. I have wondered that myself. It is one of the many things I find puzzling about your behavior. What is there to be puzzled by? I'm a simple creature. I like swords. I follow orders. There's nothing else to know about me. As I said, you're not as callow as I thought. In any case, we should go now. I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. I told you before that I was sent here. I was not sent alone. 
I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Kalanad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. I heard the stories of Ostagar. Your kith stood their ground when others fled. No one can do more than that. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead, nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers, and my sword was gone from my hand. I searched for it, and when that failed I asked my rescuers what had become of it. I killed them. With my bare hands. I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Taventer, unarmed and alone, to bring my report to the Arashok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. We know who we are, and what we are meant to be. Nearly Kalanhad. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. You called. I am hardly surprised. To put it lightly, no one has a place here. Your farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. What does that accomplish? The farmer who buys a shop is never a merchant. He is always a farmer turned merchant. He carries his old life with him as a turtle carries its shell. Meant by whom? And if that were indeed his purpose, why did that mysterious source of meaning not make him so to begin with? You can learn to find it in doing your duty, in serving your people. There is no need to search for it. Shall we move on? There is... Interesting food here. You have a thing. It doesn't have a word in the Kunari tongue. Little baked things, like bread, but sweet and crumbly. Yes, we have no such things in our lands. This should be remedied. Perhaps. It's strange to be in a crowd and hear a language that is not your own. To see faces that are and aren't like yours. I miss the smells of Saharan. Tea and incense and the sea. Ferelden smells of wet dogs. True. I was trying to forget that part. Shall we move on? As you wish. Unexpected. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, why you little? Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. Oh, look at what your fool dog placed in my pack. A putrid, half-eaten hair is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. The dirty mongrel can have this back. There. And tell him not to do it again. I just did. I don't want it, you worthless fur bag. Oh, he's just trying to be manipulative, I can tell. I do it too. I seek to understand the dog. We fight alongside each other and I must discover the strength of his heart. The true warrior understands. <laughs> 